if we take a further look at this task three, which is very similar to the one that we just did before. This is about differential mode and common mode current, um, not voltage. But once again, we have two time domain functions given now for the differential mode current and for the common mode current, once again, with some magnitude and phase of cosine functions. And now the question is how large is the real current on the forward and the return conductor. And yeah, the formula is more or less already given here. So if we want to have the first current, this is um, the sum of these two modal currents, let's say. And so for the second current, it's the common half of the common mode current minus the differential mode current because the differential mode current is pointing in the opposite direction. And so, yeah, what do we do? It says we should please refer to the same remarks as in task two. Can we take the IDM first? Yeah, we, we take our time functions, yeah, write them as complex phases in exponential form, write them, convert them into real and imaginary part, do, do this plus and minus convert back yeah. into uh, polar form and write them back as time functions. So we take our differential mode current uh, as a phasor. We take the common mode current as a phasor and say, okay, here it's 200 milliampere times E2J 50 degree and here it's 25 milliampere. So the um, common mode current is much smaller and also has a different phase angle, 150 degree. So then we can write this and this as real and imaginary part. So I will go back to my octave window and say, okay, I1 is, uh, if I get, no, not I1, IDM is 200 milliampere is once again 10 to the power of three, but in this case, it does not really matter if you take care here about the unit and one J times, no, yeah, times 50. And we need to convert from degree into radians. So we divide by 180 multiply with P. And so we get this, which uh, looks reasonable. And we can do the very same for the common mode current. And here it's just 25 and 150 degree for the angle, 25 milliampere for the magnitude. And so we get 129 milliampere plus J, and this was a little larger, 153. And for the common mode current, we get some, um, yeah, as it's meaningful for 150 degree of angle, some negative real part, some positive imaginary part. This is 21.6, so we will say 22 minus 22 milliampere, and then plus J, and this is 12.5 milliampere. <coughs> okay, um, then we can just do this conversion here and say, okay, our first current is, I take half of this common mode plus the differential mode. And for the second, I do um, exactly as it's written there. So I will, of course, directly do this in Octave. Um, not so much space for the window on my screen, so this could fit. Okay, so the first current or the current, the full current on the first wire is half of the common mode current plus the differential mode current. And the current on the second wire is the same but with minus. And so I get 117.7, which is 118 plus 160, 100, 
80 milliampere plus j 160 milliampere uh, which somehow makes sense right yeah approximately and so for the second we get minus 139 and minus 15 minus j 15 milliampere and yeah this also makes sense if we take half of this and then minus this gets negative and this one um, this does not look too meaningful 100 no 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 not 15 it's 147 right this was wrong here yeah? 147 okay this looks better and so now we can convert this into back into polar form using Euler's identity um, take the magnitude of the first current take the magnitude of the second current and so it's 198 and 203 let's say 198 milliampere and 203 milliampere times E2J and E2J and the angle of the first current um, we get with this function and if we multiply with 180 uh, divided by P we get degrees so this is 53 or 54 and this is minus 133 so 54 degree minus 133 degree and then finally we can write this back as time functions and say the current on the first wire and the current on the second wire is just uh, with the very same values and then written back into real cosine functions because we started with cosine functions we will also end with cosine functions omega t plus 54 degree and 203 milliampere times cosine omega t and yeah minus yeah uh, minus 133 okay and then we can shortly think about this. Does it make sense? Can it be like this? Uh, we started with a rather high differential mode current and a rather small in comparison common mode current. And now we get two currents on the wires that are almost equal in size but that have in comparison to each other a 180 degree phase shift because if you take minus 133 at 180 you will get approximately this angle if you take this ang angle subtract 180 degree you will get approximately this one um, yeah and does this make sense yeah. yes sounds reasonable right because if we would um, if this differential mode current um, is much larger than this one then these two currents should be mainly plus and minus of this differential mode um, current um, just with a little disturbance let's say with this common mode voltage current and so this in this case also perfectly makes sense and so wh wh what we could do as before we could um, yeah we, we still have our our um, our frequency there um, oh no we haven't because I I, um, I restarted octave so we have 50 for the frequency or this is what we assumed last time then we can say omega is 2 times p times f we can also say our periodic time is 1 over f we can once again define some time domain space and um, do the conversion or do the calculation as we did before so i1 now with small letters is 200 
milliampere times cosine of omega multiplied with t plus 50 degree and the 50 degree needs to be converted into radians by dividing by 180 multiplying with p so when we get um no something is wrong we just get one value no no it's it's, it's probably right um, because here here you can see we get the 101 values so we do the same for now oh, this was not i1 um this was this was the the differential mode current something is going on here <laughs> I just want to repeat the, the last equation. Maybe there's not enough space here. My screen is too small. Hmm. I know why some people prefer MATLAB instead of Octave. Sometimes it's better in the graphical user interface. Okay, so this should not be I1, it should be the differential mode. Current, and then we can do the same with the common mode current. And say this is 25 and the, the angle is 150. Um, yeah, and so then as discussed, the first current is the sum of half of the common mode current plus the differential mode current and the second current is half of the common mode current minus the differential mode current and now if we once again use a first figure and inside this first figure um, plot as a function of time our first current um, the second current that we just calculated the differential mode current and the common mode current we should get four curves and uh, we could add a grid we can add the x label in the y label now we should say okay this is better the current in ampere and for the legend i just need to change everything from voltage into current even if it's very small and almost impossible to read no there it's good there there it's no yeah I, i'm not sure um you, you need to have very good glasses to be able to read this but the blue curve is the first current, the red curve is the second current. As you can see, they have almost same amplitude, similar amplitude, but they are out of phase. <laughs> and that's why the differential mode current is very similar to the first current. And the common mode current, which is this purple curve, is much smaller in comparison. And so now if we do the same as before, just to check our results and have a second figure, and if we inside the second figure plot the, the differential mode current and uh, directly calculate it in time domain and calculate it from the frequency domain, uh, and this I should be I exactly, uh, but I, I should have received an error anyhow. So, yeah, then we see, okay, we once again that get two very similar curves and i can just add our labels here and stuff and now if i add up a last figure and for this last figure um, do the same plotting but for the common mode so common mode here common mode there common mode there then this should also uh, fit we should see two similar curves if we add labels then we have a nice diagram Okay, so this works. Solution checked. Um, it's always a good thing, yeah? and this is also something that you might want to do in, in, your, in your later work, in your master thesis, in a research project, if you calculate one thing in two different ways. Um, so here we have 
directly calculated in, in time domain just by adding uh, lots of numbers. And here we have done this conversion into frequency domain complex phasors, polar form, Cartesian form, Euler formula, and so on. And we get the same result. And it would be very, very uncommon that we would have done the very same mistake this way and this way. So it's not a perfect mathematical proof that the result is correct, but it, it would be a strange coinci coincidence if we would have done the very same mistake both ways. Um, okay, my, a colleague of mine studied physics and he always said, um, if you do mistakes, make sure that the number of mistakes is always even because then one mistake can cancel the other mistake. And this is probably also something that is uh, important when doing such calculations. Okay, do you have further questions related to this task? This does not seem to be the case. So the last thing that I would like to do is um, ask ChatGPT how good ChatGPT is and something like this. Can you solve this task, please? And we just insert the picture, and it's uploading, and we gone. And it's ChatGPT 4.0. I think this is the paid version. Um, interestingly, the 01 mini and preview is not uh, not available at the moment. Okay, so what? Let's check what ChatGPT tells us to solve this task. Um, we would need to, uh, it, it just repeats this yeah, and then it says, okay, here we have this formula and this formula with plus and minus as also we have written it down. And now it tries to insert this stuff. Hmm, I can perform the calculations for you if you, uh, if you would like to see the numeric form of these results, please, yes, I would like to see. this numeric form of the results. Yeah, so <laughs> from my point of view, of course, you can write it down like this, but then it's not super helpful. And ChatGPT at the moment mm, does not really suggest the good way going into frequency domain with this. Yeah, and now, hmm, where does the plus 60 come from? Ah, okay, it, it something did something like this converting the plus 150 degree, um, but then plus 60. Does this make sense? No. It changed the magnitude. Yeah, yeah, but it, it um, I mean, this makes sense because 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. And the ampere is missing in this case. Yeah, There's also some, as we discussed, some typical ChatGPT mistakes that it's not really taking care about the units. And it tried to go from 180, from 150 degree and positive. But if I add 180 to this, I should get minus 30, right? So minus, minus 30 degree and minus, from my point of view, would make sense, but, but the 60, I don't know where the 60 comes from. Um, yeah, so um, how about converting the time functions into, into complex phasors? and doing the calculation in frequency domain. You will answer, oh, yeah. yeah, okay. So it's what it was not a chat GPT error. You say it was an, an error of our network connection. Okay, to solve this, it suggests, let's go into complex phases, do in frequency domain as suggested. Uh, write this like this. And this is another form to write it down. It's okay. Uh, you, f you find this in some books. It means what we have also written down. This times e to the power of j and this angle. So this is just a different way to write down this complex exponential function. Okay, and then we can do it like this. And then we get uh, hmm, this 
and 186 so we can check what we calculated mm -hmm. no not really because something else and this if you would add 360 um, would this make sense? I, I, don't, I, I don't think so, right? What, what is minus 100, minus one, uh, 419 plus 360? No, it's minus 59. It's so also not super helpful in this case. Um, if, we, if we would check this analysis here in between. Yeah, so it does tries to convert degree into radians to get these angles um, but I think the problem is still that it would somehow rely on this symbolic math toolbox which is not meaningful in this case we have done all the conversion without any symbolic math we just used plain number crunching yeah um, as usual um, something of this can be helpful, might be helpful if you know what you are doing. If you don't know what you are doing, it's also just you are standing in a dark room. Somewhere is a light switch. You have a long wooden stick and you are poking, sticking along the, along the wall to find the light switch to, to be illuminated and to get some idea how to properly solve this task. Of course, uh, now, now we could ask back and forth and ask back and forth and probably we could also get the AI to give a right probably answer. You can also take the code and try to find the error. Yeah, you could also probably take this code here and uh, try to debug the, the Python code there. But... Um, you just simply ask it to avoid using any library. Yeah, you or could now ask uh, to avoid the symbolic math library, for example. But then you would need to know, you would need to have some expert knowledge in knowing, okay, the symbolic math library is really here the problem. So um, as usual, these ChatGPT solutions are not super helpful to solve da tasks like this. It's, it's better if you, if you have some, some very good basic fundamental understanding knowledge of electric engineering and um, try to solve them by yourself as much as possible.